Good morning. Go ahead and please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to read two verses here. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 and verse 15 in your authorized version of the scriptures. You are expected to follow along. You're going to see the title of this video. What said the scriptures about this? Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Signs. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Look at verse 14 again. And God said, spoke, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. The first appearance of the variation of the word sign, signs, that kind of stuff is right there in Genesis 14. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Okay? And right here it is for what? It is in, it tied into what? What is in the firmament. Okay? What is in the firmament. Go now to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Okay? You, dear, dear Pentecostal Charismatics, uh, among many of your problems, your biggest is that you do not rightly divide the word of truth. You are not dispensational. You do not rightly divide the word of truth. Hence, so many of your errors, so many of them. I would know. I used to be a Pentecostal charismatic. Very early in my walk with the Lord, going on now 13 years here pretty soon, Lord willing. Okay? So I am aware of your beliefs, Pentecostal charismatic. Okay? But we saw in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, about signs, you know, in the firmament, that kind of stuff. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 under verse 4. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, and tempting desired him that he would shew them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. I addressed the sign of the prophet Jonas in a video already. I've already addressed that. If I can remember, I'll link it in the description box. But if I do not remember, dear Pentecostal, excuse me, Pentecostal, charismatic, um, 
please, I encourage you to go and look that video up on your own time. Okay? All right? But now, okay, the very first appearance of the variation of the word sign, signs, Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Okay? And our Lord here addresses about you can uh, the face of the sky, but can you not discern the sign of the times? Okay? Go to Exodus chapter 4. And uh, for you, dear, <laughs> dear Pentecostal, charismatic, um, your religion is Catholic. Your religion is Catholic. Okay? But let's go to Exodus chapter 4. Uh, now, I, I read in Exodus chapter 4 yesterday, um, but I'm going to read in this again today. We are going to read Exodus chapter 4. We're going to read this in its entirety, uh, pretty much. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're going to read Exodus chapter 4 in its entirety. Okay, can you handle that? I hope you can. Okay. Please follow me along. Don't just sit there. All right? Thank you. Exodus chapter 4. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. I bet you kind of freaked him out at first, don't you? <laughs> and the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Now pay attention. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign. The first sign. that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Okay? And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take, uh, shall take of the water of the river, and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. So, signs to demonstrate unto who? The Hebrews. The Jews. Okay. Moses was to demonstrate the signs Onto the Hebrews, the Jews, okay? For what reason? Verse 5, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee, okay? Now, hold, hold your place here, okay? Hold your place there. Go to 1 Corinthians. Um, again, dear Dear Pentecostal, excuse me, I, I'm going to try to be very cordial. Dear Pentecostal, charismatic, riddle me this. 
When did the New Testament begin? Shh. I'll give you a hint. Look in the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. You go look that up on your own time, okay? Please, for your own sake. For your own sake, okay? But go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the very first chapter. We're going to look at one verse. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Come on. One verse. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Let's read verse 22. Or verse 23. How about we read verses 23 and verse 24 while we're at it, okay? Let's reread this. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ, uh, Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. What's a Greek? A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay? Verse 22. Hinge this in your head, please. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Memorize that. Remember that. Again, dear, dear Pentecostal Charismatic, when did the New Testament begin? When? I'm not going to tell you. I want you to look for yourself. Hebrews chapter 9. Go look at that chapter. In the authorized version of the scriptures, of course. See for yourself, okay? Now go back to Exodus chapter 4, okay? Continuing from verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. Tongue, slow tongue. <laughs> and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Moses was fighting his sending, his calling, so to speak. Verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. You know, when the Lord calls you to something and he shows you time and time again, that he wants you to do something and you fight with him on it, hello, um, he, he will, he'll, he'll do things to get your attention. Rest assured, I, I speak from experience, okay? Let's continue from verse 14. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put my words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. 
See, the representation kind of thing is going on here. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? The typology. Okay? Can you see it? Okay? For us today in this dispensation. Okay? Old Testament prophets are not around today. Because there we have the complete, perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, also known as the King James Version. Okay? This is what our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, wants us to know of himself within the scriptures. He is not going to tell of a, tell of future events outside of the scriptures. Okay? We have the completed canon of the scriptures. Okay? To prophesy in this dispensation, number one, okay, you are saved. You have the Holy Ghost within you and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is that spirit. Okay? And the Holy Ghost in you will speak through you when speaking or reading the scriptures to someone. Okay? The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit will speak through you the scriptures unto whomever it is he sends you to speak to. That is prophesying for today. Okay? Okay? That is what that means. I also have another video addressing that. Um, I can't remember which are uh, the first John 4 1 through 6 1. Okay, if I can remember again, I'll try to link it in this video as well. Okay, all right, so let's let's continue. Uh, uh, let's see, where did we leave off? Verse 17 And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. And Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt, and Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel's my first act. Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass, by the way, in the inn, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Wow, huh? Let's continue. Then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. And circumcision was an outward sign between the Lord and the children of Israel of the covenant, which he took very seriously, okay? Paul addresses circumcision, okay, in the book of Galatians, okay? We're not going to get into that. It's not a necessity for salvation today or to stay saved or to be right with God today, okay? You dear Pentecostals and Charismatics, you do not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? That is your problem. Let's continue. And the Lord said to Aaron, from verse 27 to the close of the chapter, 
And the Lord said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the mount of God and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him and all the signs which he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Israel. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Now, like I said, the very first mention of signs, sign, whatever, the very first variation is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And sign, the very first mention, is in Exodus chapter 4, verse 8. Now, dear, dear Pentecostal charismatic, okay? Who is Moses sent on to? Israel, the Jews, okay? Why did Moses do these signs? To show the, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, Israel, that the God of their fathers sent him onto them, okay? That's why he did that. Now, go to, okay? Go to now, Matthew chapter 12, uh, Matthew 12, Matthew 12, Matthew chapter 12, okay? Matthew chapter 12. Now, you have to remember something, dear Pentecostal charismatic. The New Testament, when Jesus Christ, you know, the Sermon on the Mount and a lot of the stuff before the crucifixion, before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? Before all of that, doctrinally, it was still the Old Testament. Doctrinally, it was still under the law. Okay? Okay? Again, dear Pentecostal charismatic, when did the New Testament begin? See for yourself in Hebrews chapter 9, please. Okay? But doctrinally, dispensationally, you know, that's called rightly dividing the word of truth, it was still under the law. Hence, before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, He was sent unto who? The Jews. Who are the Jews? The Hebrews. Israel. Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 and verse 39. Okay? Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 and verse 39. Then, the cert, then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay? Now, we read that. We already kind of looked at that in Matthew chapter 16, right? We read that here in Matthew chapter 12, okay, for a reason. Now, go back to Deuteronomy in the Torah, the first five books of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 on to verse 19. Okay? Please, please, come on. Don't waste your time. <laughs> 
Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 on to verse 19. The Lord thy God will rise, raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desiredest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Okay? This is making reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? This is making reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? All right, are you with me on that? Most everybody, even these Christians, okay, even they will say about what we just read that that is making reference onto our Lord Jesus Christ. Even Catholics will admit that. Even you devils will admit that about what we just looked at in Deuteronomy chapter 18, right? Yeah, okay, this is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. All right? You're with me. You're with me, right? Okay. Now, now, now let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Your, your chapter, okay? Your chapter. Acts chapter 2. We are going to read in Acts chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 24. Now, you're going to want to hold your place here at certain times because we're going to go looking at other things as we go. Okay? But let's go, please. Let's go. Okay? Acts chapter 2. We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 24. Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, hold on. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The disciples were what? Jews. They were all Jews. Okay? But Pentecost, where you take your name, Pentecostals, some of you know this, but I am going to, and beg your pardon, if you already know about this, then, then bear with me. Pentecost means what? Do you know? It means 50. Hold your place here and go to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus. Chapter 23, Leviticus chapter 23, okay? We are going to be reading verses 15 on to verse 21. Hold your, hold your place there. Come on, come on. Hold your place there in Acts chapter 2 and go to Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 on to verse 21, okay? 15 on to verse 21 in Leviticus chapter 23. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days. 
and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Now, if you have a reference scripture, you know, a set of scriptures that has a center column reference, check the reference uh, on that, and you will most likely see what? It's, it's looking look in the margin of your scriptures, okay? Look, uh, mine, which is Cambridge, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Okay? This is what the Pentecost is. Dear friend, Pentecost happens yearly. It's not a one-in-a-lifetime event, like some of you, unfortunately, believe. Okay? Pentecost happens yearly. It's a yearly thing. Okay? And Pentecost... Leviticus as pertaining unto the tribe of Levi. Pentecostal, dear friend. Pentecost is Jewish. Okay? Let's continue this. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 17. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offerings even an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the, with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord. With the two lambs they shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day, that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. So Pentecost is 50. A yearly feast of the Lord unto whom? The Jews. Okay? Now, go back to Acts chapter 2. And suddenly... Uh, picking up at verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as, like as of fire, like as of fire. Not that they were, of fire, tongues as of fire, like as of fire. That's very significant. Let's continue. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Let's, the scripture is going to define itself, okay? Let's continue. As the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews. Devout men. Out of every nation under heaven. Out. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Okay. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, okay? Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Let's keep reading. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. These were Jews, okay? These were Jews. But it says in their own language. You have to remember, dear friend, dear, dear Pentecostal charismatic, at this time, 
For people to speak more than one tongue, a tongue is a language, not your devilish blah 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 blah. That's that is of Satan. Okay? That is devilish. Alright? In your beloved Acts chapter two, okay? The, these are known languages. Okay? But you have to remember, at this time, it was commonplace for people to be bilingual. What does that mean? To speak more than one language, unlike us Americans, okay, Who's, who has this thing that is speak English or die, right? And forgive me, those of you of other nations, but if any of you know uh, any of us Americans, we're usually like that, okay? It was commonplace at this time for people to speak more than one language. Okay? Now, let's continue. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans Jews? Okay, these were Jews. Speaking on to Jews. Okay, let's continue. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? These were Jews born in other places, other countries, but yet they were Jewish. They could speak of their own native tongue, uh, Hebrew, but yet because they were born elsewhere at this time, they also spake other languages. Okay? Let's continue. Here are the languages. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And all these places mentioned where these Jews were born at and they were all assembled together, they spake these languages. Okay? The tongues in Acts chapter 2. Dear Pentecostal charismatic. All right there. And not one of them is a blah 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 blah. Okay? Not one of them. What you are doing is of the devil himself, satanic. Okay? It is not of God. Deal with it, please. Let's continue, though. And they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meanest this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. <clears throat> but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said, Ye have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I had to do that. Because that is what you do, isn't it? When somebody who um, is that much versed in the scriptures who rightly divide the word of truth, okay? When they see you doing your demonic devil, excuse me, demonic is not in the scriptures, your devilish tongue talking and they look at you in love and say, just shut up, shut up, stop it. What do you do? How do you react? You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I also have a video on that, okay? Check that out if you're curious. All right? But did Peter say that? No. What did he say? But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. 
But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my capital S spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Okay? And I will shew wonders in heaven above and signs. Signs. In the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You look at it, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. Just like Moses. Really? Yes. Just like Moses. Okay? Which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken him by wicked hands, the Romans, have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Okay? Verse 22. Beg your pardon. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. There was not one Gentile present. In Acts chapter 2, dear friend. Why was that? Because it is to the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Okay? And again, my dear, dear, dear Pentecostal charismatic friend. When did the New Testament begin? You have to study to shew thyself approved unto God, to be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You Pentecostal charismatics, you do not rightly divide the word of truth. Hence, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is ashamed of all of you. Why? Because you do not rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? I hate to break that to you, okay? But, okay, now we, we, we saw tongues, okay? We saw the tongue talking. It is not that devilish blah, 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 okay? It's not. There were no Gentiles present, but who were present? Jews, okay? The Jews require a sign. Okay? I don't get ahead of me about your 1 Corinthians 14. We'll get to it, but not yet. Okay? We'll get to that. Wait for it. We have to go through this. Okay? You understand? Okay. There were no Gentiles present. It's for the Jews. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Do you understand? Please, nod your head with me, okay? All right? Now, very quickly, you might be saying to me something about, well, Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, right? Because to you, Pentecostal charismatic, the gospel to you is what? Acts 2.38, right? Let's go to Mark chapter 16, okay? Let's go. 
Oh, we're going head on with this, boy. Okay? Mark chapter 16, verses 14 on to verse 18. Okay? When did the New Testament begin? Dear, 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 Pentecostal charismatic. Mark, chapter 16, verses 14 on to verse 18. Okay? Afterward he appeared unto to the eleven, as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Who are the them? Who is the them? The disciples. Who were what? Jews. He was speaking to Jews. This is the beginning of this current dispensation. Yes. Yes. The New Testament had begun. I'm going to spoil this for you, but please check this out in Hebrews chapter 9. Prove me wrong, okay? The New Testament began with the death of the testator, not the birth. The death of the testator. And you find that in Hebrews chapter 9. Please go find it. Please. Read the whole chapter very slowly. Okay? But he's speaking to Jews. To the Jews. Okay? Because the Jews require a sign. Let's continue. From verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. It says right there to be baptized. Shh, 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 shh. Just don't get ahead of me now. And these... Signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Did not the apostles cast out devils? Yes. Paul cast out devils, yes. Okay. They shall speak with new tongues. We just looked at one example. We're going to look at all three of them in the book of Acts. Okay? Yeah, that's coming. But, yeah, they spake with new tongues. Okay? The Jews did. Yes, we saw that. Okay? They shall take up serpents. In the book of Acts, a viper latches onto Paul's hand. Does it not? And nothing happens to him. He shakes it off. Right? It was a, venom, a venomous viper as I believe it's actually worded within the scriptures, right? Nothing happened to them, right? Right? Yes, okay? I'm sorry if you don't like my sarcasm, dear friend. I'm sorry. I am truly sorry, okay? Your system is deluded satanic insanity. And it is one of the daughters of the harlot, Mystery Babylon. And who is Mystery Babylon? Rome! Okay? Let's continue. But Paul, like I said, the viper bit him, psst, didn't hurt him. Here's the one. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. To my knowledge, there is no reference within the book of Acts where someone actually done drunk some poison. Okay? That is not documented to my knowledge. You see down south here in America, these snake handler guys who actually, actually do drink strychnine. Yeah. Yeah. But that's down south. Not in the scriptures. But like I said, the drink any deadly thing, that is not documented within the scripture. Okay? They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. 
Paul did that. Peter did that. Okay? Those are what, dear friends? Those are signs of what? The apostles. The apostles. Okay? But now, we have just read this. Verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Okay? The Jews require a sign. Okay? Let's go to Luke chapter 24 for a little bit more clarity on this. Okay? Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 on to verse 49. Okay? Also, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The New Testament. This dispensation. Okay? This is this dispensation that we are in. All right? Now, Acts, uh, Acts, Luke chapter 24, verses 44, on to verse 49. Okay? And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. There's your canon of scripture right there. Thank you very much. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning at Jerusalem. To the Jew first. And ye are my witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Look at verse 47. Right there, beginning at Jerusalem. To the Jew first. To the Jew first, my dear friend. My dear, dear friend. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Now, go back to Acts. Let's go back to Acts chapter 4 now. Okay? Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 and 12. 10 on to verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verses 10 on to verse 12. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Okay? What's so significant about that? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel. He was addressing the Jews. It is to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay? The Jews require a sign, dear friend. This, this is this dispensation. Okay? But now let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Let's look about these apostles, right? Because y'all Pentecostal charismatics, you have lots of these apostles. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> there are apostles assigned by men. Matthias, right? Matthias in Acts chapter 1. They cast lots and said, Lord, who is it you pick? And they cast lots, and it came to Matthias, 
and they thought that's who the Lord picked. But who did the Lord actually pick to replace Judas, who fell by transgression? That'd be the Apostle Paul. Okay? The apostles that are appointed by men are not to be anything accounted of. Because you, after in Acts chapter 1, Matthias, you don't hear anything more about him, do you? Within the scriptures. Prove me wrong. Okay? Why? Because he was an apostle appointed by who? Men, not the Lord. Okay? Okay? You got these people here on YouTube, you Pentecostal charismatics, I'm trying to maintain myself, who call themselves apostles. By men. And within the scripture, the apostles that are appointed by men? Are they recognized as apostles? You don't hear about it. Barnabas was likened unto an apostle, yes. But was he an apostle chosen by the Lord or by men? Let's find out. Because to be an actual apostle, there are two requirements. Unlike what Mr. Justin Peters says, okay? And on to Mr. Justin Peters. Um, let's read. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 15. And yes, Mr. Justin Peters, you won't see this, but um, you're a Calvinistic, you're a Calvinist. And you're a MacArthur lover. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 15. And when he had called him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And elsewhere you read that, he, uh, that our Lord named them apostles. He called them apostles himself. The 12. He chose 12. He called them apostles. And he gave them this power to do. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ picked these apostles. Okay? Now these are the names of the 12 apostles. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Shimon. That must mean he's the chief of apostles. Catholics. <sighs> I'll try to, I got, I'll, I don't know if I can remember to link all these in the description box. Help me to remember, Lord. About Peter the first poop. <gasps> now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first Shimon, who was called Peter, and Andrew his brother. James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus and Labaius, whose surname was Thaddeus, Shimon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. And into any of the so and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is to rule and reign for a thousand years. That's what the Sermon on the Mount is about. Okay? Faith is mentioned only one time in the Sermon on the Mount. And in reform, in the form of a rebuke. O ye of little faith. It's all works in the Sermon on the Mount. That's why the Catholics like it. Okay? That is what it's going to be like in the kingdom of heaven. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth. 
Okay? He came here offering the kingdom of heaven. The actual physical kingdom at Jerusalem. Where he's going to come and reign for a thousand years. Okay? He was offering the kingdom of heaven first unto the Jewish people. The kingdom of heaven within the scriptures is always, prove me wrong, please, is always reference unto the physical, literal kingdom that will be at Jerusalem, dear friend. Kingdom of God is one of those either or, which is defined within the context where it appears. <gasps> yes, you know, but the sandwich, somewhere in between the bread, the sandwich, okay? The context, okay? Kingdom of God can, depending on the context, be a reference unto the kingdom of heaven. But more often than not, the kingdom of God is a reference unto the spiritual rather than the actual physical kingdom of heaven, okay? You, you are going to have to do some of this on your own time, okay? But see, when he first came here, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews, to the Jew first, okay? Let's continue. Verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy. And there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when ye depart out of the, that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the, for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Okay? Remember, dear friend, hinge. The Jews require a sign. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, gave unto Moses the ability to do the signs. Okay? Okay? And we read in Deuteronomy chapter 18 that a prophet he'll raise up like unto him, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God manifest in the flesh. Okay? God manifest in the flesh. The flesh. Here you go, you know, the flesh, the skin suit. <laughs> okay? God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? And he called himself the Father. All right? He came first offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. But what happened? What happened? They rejected it as prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53, okay? Now go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 28, okay? Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 on to verse 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, this woman was a Gentile. And she as a Gentile called him the son of David. The son of David is a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ's kingship. Okay? Which is what? He is the king of the Jews. Okay, so this Gentile woman saying, thou son of David, as a Gentile, ugh, no, 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 no. He's the king of the Jews. Okay. And he told his apostles, what? 
to go onto the lost sheep of Israel, right? What does he say? Verse 23, But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To the Jew first, dear friend. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Okay? It's to the Jew first, my friend. All right? And the Jews require a sign. The sign gifts, the healing, the tongue talking in actual languages, not your blah, 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 were sign gifts given unto the Jews to confirm what? Okay? The kingdom of heaven, as prophesied in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. Okay? They didn't want the kingdom of heaven. It was put off. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Hence, the beginning of this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. But the kingdom of God, the spiritual, had to first be offered on to the Jewish people. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? And also, too, we got to hit this one more time. we got to hit this one more time. Go to uh, John chapter 4. Okay? The woman at the well. Okay? John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 26. Okay? Uh, John chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 26. Jesus saith unto her, the woman at the well, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. Meaning, distinction. You take that A out, and it says God is spirit, how are you just supposed to discern which one is which? By your feelings? No. Right? Because you take that A out, God is a spirit. So when you're standing there talking as a devil in your blah, 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 God is spirit. No. God is a spirit. Meaning there's a distinction between one and the other. The spirit that is of God and the spirit that is the spirit of Antichrist. Okay? There's a difference. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee, am he. I that speak unto thee am he. Jesus just called himself the Messiah. Mr. John Haggy, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Okay? Okay, are you with me now? Are you still with me, dear friend? Okay? Are you still with me? Okay? The kingdom of God after the Jewish people rejected the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God had to be offered unto the Jews first. That's why Acts chapter 7, dear friend, is so significant. Okay? Sign gifts were all there for what? To confirm that unto the Jews. 
to confirm the kingdom of God unto the Jews. That here it is, okay? The kingdom of heaven has been put off. But here's your second chance. Here's the kingdom of God as a nation. It was offered unto them as a nation. Did they accept it? Go to Acts chapter 7. Okay, go to Acts chapter 7. Okay, we're, we're, I've, I've covered this before, but this is specifically for you, Pentecostal Charismatic, okay? Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. This is very significant. Acts chapter 7 is when Israel, as a nation, rejected the kingdom of God. Okay? That's when, it, as a nation, they rejected it. And hence, Romans chapter 11, I beg your pardon, which I'll try to remember to put in the description box. Okay? We, the Gentile, were grafted into the tree of the Jew to make the Jew jealous, to bring them all back onto their God. Okay? I get into that in uh, a video, uh, Replacement Theology 1 and 2, Okay, get into Acts, uh, Romans chapter 11, okay? But we were grafted in to make them jealous. But right here, Acts chapter 7, is where the Jewish people as a nation rejected the gospel, okay? That says their rejection, and it came on to us, all right? Now, Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. After Stephen gives his discourse unto them, ye stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the capital J and O, just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, whom have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Compare verse 54 with Acts, what, 237? Where it says they were pricked, and here they were cut. Okay? The pricking when you prick your skin or anything like that, just a little blood comes out, right? And when they were pricked in their hearts, men and brethren, what shall we do, right? Right? Here they were cut to the heart. And what did they do? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Let's stop right there. Standing on the right hand of God. Okay? Standing. Ready to come back. See, if the Jewish people as a nation had accepted what was being offered and verified by the sign gifts... If they had done that, things would have been different. But there again, it was prophesied throughout the Old Testament that they were not going to. Hence, salvation has come unto us. Hello, Gentiles. Okay? But see, God had to offer it or else what? He wouldn't be a fair and just God, would he? That's why he was standing. But let's continue. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. Right there, buddy. There it is. And stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. He was standing, but they stopped their ears. They didn't want to hear it. And cast him out to the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen. Every stone that thudded into Stephen's flesh was the rejection, a lash, if you will. 
was the Jewish rejection as a nation of the gospel. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now today, obviously, a Jew can get saved by the gospel that was revealed unto Paul. Okay? There was not two bodies. Okay? There wasn't one uh, body of the Jew and one of the Gentile. That is called hyper-dispensationalism. Uh, okay? And that is heresy. This is the time of the Gentiles. But God offered the kingdom of God to the Jew first. Okay? It was to the Jew first. They rejected it in Acts chapter 7. This being this dispensation... Okay? It was this dispensation, but he, being fair and just, had to offer it unto the Jews first. And they rejected that. And then us come, come along us Gentiles. Okay? Okay? We were grafted in. Okay? It's not this hyper uh, dispensational thing where there is one body just of the Jews and then of the Gentiles. No. Because Paul said about those who were in Christ before me in Romans chapter 16, I believe it is. Okay? One of you, brethren, put the link in the description box, okay, for that verse. Okay? Okay? But see, after that, in Acts chapter 8, you see the very first Gentile get saved in similar fashion to the way we are saved today. Okay? Okay? Now... Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 on to verse 48. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 on to verse 38. Now Peter had to see a vision of the sheet with the animals at the four corners, coming down and the Lord said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And he's like, not so, Lord, nothing unclean has went into my mouth. And the Lord said unto him, that which I have cleansed, call not thou common. Okay? Meaning, meaning, not meaning that it was okay to eat pork. No. Making reference unto us Gentiles. You got to remember, uh, Peter was pretty stubborn. He needed to see this in order to get the gravity that Oh, the Gentiles have been grafted in. Peter was Jewish, right? Right? Yeah, okay. Acts chapter 10, verses 34 and verse 48. Talking on to Cornelius, a Gentile. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Now, the baptism that John preached, John baptized in water, right? Right? Okay? Water baptism. All right? And in uh, Mark chapter 16, where our Lord says, uh, those who uh, believe and are baptized, okay? See, today, you and I, of the church of the living God, Jew and Gentile, we are baptized as an outer profession of an inner conversion, okay? But water baptism is not necessary for your salvation. You, Pentecostal, charismatic, you are getting that from Catholicism, your mother. Okay? That's what the Catholics teach. That's what Luther taught. And he was, you know, 
He wanted to reform Catholicism to make it the German Catholic Church instead of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay? Okay? It was for a sign. Okay? That's why it's repent and be baptized. Okay? That's why and also uh, uh, chapter 4, uh, he makes no mention of water baptism. Okay? The baptism of John was what? With water. Okay? But see, the Jews rejected the gospel officially, and it went on to us. We were grafted into their tree, okay? Okay? It's that, this was the time of the Gentiles, yes. Yes. But the Jews rejected it, and it's gone on to us to make the Jew jealous. Water baptism today is not pertinent for your salvation. It is an outward profession of an inner conversion. That's all it is. You ain't going to go to hell if you don't get water baptized. Okay? Okay? But let's continue. Verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews... And in Jerusalem, to the Jew first. And see, Peter was sent because he was, Peter is the apostle on to the who? The circumcision, the Jews. As Paul is the apostle on to the who? The uncircumcision, us Gentiles. And in Acts chapter 15, when they all got together for the Jerusalem conference address, okay? Okay? They all, after that, were preaching what Paul preached. Okay, let's continue. For God, was with, uh, for God was with him. Verse 39, And we are witnesses of all these things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and shewed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. And him to him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth on him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, Jews, which believed, were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Them of the circumcision, the Jews. Therefore, tongues are for a sign. Not to them who believe, but to those who believe not. And talking in tongues was a sign for the Jews. You, we're going to look at the three times it appears where they talked in tongues in the book of Acts. We're looking at them. Jews were present every single time. Verse 46, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnified God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Jews were present. Jews were present. Because the sign gifts were signs unto the Jews. To confirm what? Hey, the kingdom of God. Here it is. Okay? Sign gifts were for the Jews. And when the Jews rejected that, and it came on to us Gentiles to be grafted into their tree, the sign gifts started to dissipate. 
I, I know you don't like that. But see, again, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Because don't y'all believe that the Holy Ghost can come and go, come and go, come and go? Which is totally contrary to Ephesians chapter 1, where you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Sealed. Uh, once saved, always saved. Which I have not met one Pentecostal, personally, that believes in once saved, the scriptural doctrine of once saved, always saved. No. Because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Hence, you think this, the Holy Ghost comes and goes, comes and goes. Okay? That's a problem. You don't rightly divide the word of truth, my dear friend. Okay? These were sign gifts unto the Jews. Acts chapter 19 now. Acts chapter 19. Verses 1 on to verse 8. Uh, Paul was Jewish, by the way. Right? We'll pick your part. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And now you got to remember, as Paul's manner was, what did Paul do? He went to the Jew first and then also, also to the Gentile. He's the apostle unto the Gentile. Yes, he is. But you look in the book of Acts. He went to the Jew first. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? He went to the Jew first. Because Acts is a book of transition. Okay? It is a transitional book. Okay? Okay? And for you Pentecostal charismatics to make it your go-to doctrine for all things, you're in great error. Verse 2. Again, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John's baptism. John's baptism. The baptism of remission of sins being dipped in water. Okay? Okay? Then, Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. There were Jews present when the tongue talking was there. Okay? These disciples, probably Jews. Paul himself was a Jew. Okay? Paul believed, of course. But of course. But the point is, there were Jews present there. Out of those 12, there were Jews present there. Other than Paul. Sign gifts, dear brethren. Church of the Living God, we know this. Sign gifts for signs for the Jews that went away. Okay, how do you know that? How do you know that? Go to First Timothy. First Timothy. Okay, First Timothy chapter five. First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty-three. Now, Paul healed people. You know, the guy who fell out of the loft when he was preaching all night? Wow, that must have been great, huh? But he fell out the loft. He brought him up and uh, brought him back to life, right? Okay. Uh, they took handkerchiefs and whatnot. He healed people. Okay, the signs of an apostle. All the apostles chosen by our Lord had two things in common. They all saw the Lord with their own eyes. And he personally chose them. And in him choosing his apostles, 
He gave them the power to do these signs, Mr. Justin Peters. Okay? There is only two requirements, not three, of being an apostle according to Scripture, according to the Lord. He chose them, and they all saw him personally. There are apostles made of men, but when you look in the book of Acts, they're not really highly esteemed as the 12 apostles because the 12 apostles are whom the Lord chooses, not men. Okay? But we all know that Paul could heal people, right? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, talking to Timothy. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thine stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. Now, are you going to, you Pentecatholic, Charis, Chari Catholic, you're Catholics, okay? Um, you're going to sit there and try to tell me that Timothy didn't have the faith to be healed? Or is it that the sign gifts were going away? Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, verse 20. Paul was able to heal people, right? He was, yes, he was. Yes, he was. Why didn't he heal Timothy? I'm quite certain Timothy had faith, had the faith to be healed, as you say. Second Timothy chapter four, verse 20. Erastus abode at Corinth, but Trophimus have I left at Miletum sick. Why didn't uh, Paul heal him? Didn't have the faith. Oh, shut up. No, no different. Because the sign gifts were for the Jews. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, okay, said we were going to do uh, go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you know about the unknown tongues, right? Whoa, uh, unknown tongues, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's read, let's, uh, beg your pardon. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I usually turn my ringer off and my brother was calling me and um, I'm almost done here. So, <laughs> brother, you see this? Yes, I got your call. Once I'm done, I'm going to call you, okay? <laughs> so, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12 on to verse 14. Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Verse 15, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Verse 16, Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say, Amen, at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? In other words, there needs to be an interpreter. And I know that the assemblies of God You'd have some devil-possessed individual going, blah, 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 and he'd say a prayer like, oh, okay, Lord, give me the interpretation. And then he'll give some rah, rah, rah kind of thing that's contrary to the scripture. No, no. The unknown tongue is in context about having someone to interpret it. Okay? And it's also a known language too. Unknown to the person unless someone interprets it. See? Okay? Okay? 
So if you're one day praying and praying and your main tongue is English and all of a sudden you say something in Spanish, okay? Okay? Unknown to you what you said, but you know that it's a known language. You remember and you say to somebody uh, of the Church of the Living God, it's like, I said this in prayer. And they spoke Spanish, you know? The interpreter. Okay? There, there's... Your blah, 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 tongue talking is of the devil. Or more likely of your own flesh. Because you're charismatic, right? And charismatic means that you have chrism, that you're an anointed special one, right? Because not everybody can speak in tongues. You're not special enough to speak in tongues, right? nonsense dear friend it's absolute nonsense let's look at a warning now in the book of revelation revelation now i gotta pause this okay sorry about that revelation chapter two revelation chapter two Sorry about that. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 7. On to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. A scriptural apostle is one who has seen the Lord and personally appointed by him. Okay? Matthias, nothing came of him. Barnabas, okay? You basically hear nothing more of him except the mention. It's like uh, bring Barnabas or something. Paul mentions him just briefly, but he went out of currency. Okay. The only ones that are noted of the apostles are the 12 whom our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our father chose himself and who all of them saw him personally. And you Pentecostal charismatics got your apostles. You're liars. There are no apostles today. Verse 3, And has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, and accept thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Nicolaitans, someone who sets themselves up above the laity. Oh, kind of like Catholics. Kind of like you charismatics. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 13. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 13. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is, uh, is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set thee set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, 
which say they are Jews and are not, which say they are Jews. Replacement theology. Catholics do not call themselves Jewish, but they believe that they have replaced the Jew. The Great Tribulation, which is correctly called the time of Jacob's trouble, they say that the Great Tribulation is for the purification of the church. Hence, Catholics are replacement theology. They say they are Jews and are not. What is it, the uh, British Hebrews, right? Or the black Hebrews, right? They say they are Jews and are not? No, no. Okay? But more or less, Catholicism. They don't say they're Jewish, no. But they believe they have replaced the Jew. But do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him the, my new name. Excuse me. He that hath an ear, let him hear with the Spirit. Say it unto the churches. So, the apostles were 12. They were all Jews. Okay? I know, Shimon the Canaanite, right? He was Jewish who came from Canaan. Okay? The apostles were Jews. The apostles were Jews. Okay? And for you uh, guys out there who are Pentecatholic, care Catholic, calling yourselves apostles, you're basically saying that you are Jews, much like your mother, Roman Catholicism. Okay? Uh, please consider these things, dear, dear Pentecatholic, especially when you have your prophets prophesying about Trump and all this nonsense. It's a bunch of lies. Okay? And very quickly, like I have said unto you, here is what your big problem is. Okay? Here is your problem. Here is your problem. Here is your problem. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth night not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What is the word of truth? The authorized version of the scripture. That tells us that we have to rightly divide it according to the dispensations. This whole written book is written for you. But it's not all written to you. And you, Pentecostal, charismatic, you are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? You don't. Because you do not believe in internal security. You call to yourselves, you take upon yourselves, you think you have the gifts, the sign gifts that were there specifically for the Jews. You think that you are going to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. You think that the catching away is a heresy. I remember your big guy, um, what is it, Wiz Wigglesworth and Pink bashed the scriptural catching away. Please consider these things. And get out of that system before it's too late. Okay? Please.
please. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you're a Pentecostal charismatic, you're going to be left behind. And all your nonsensical stuff that you believe is going to go up like a puff in front of your face. Please consider these things and repent. Okay? But anyway, I got to go. I've got to uh, call back my brother. <laughs> and um, just thank you, brethren. Thank you all. All of you of the Church of the Living God. And may this help at least one of you. That's what it's all about. So, thank you. I love you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.